Hey guys, Chad here from CNR Reviews. We're going to be doing another gun comparison today. And uh, we have a new 45 for us. It's the Car CW45 versus the Kimber Ultra Carry 2 1911. These are both 45 ACPs. These are both tried and true guns for us at least. And we're going to be going over size and features. We're going to also be weighing the guns today, talking about price, and then some final thoughts on both these guns at the end of the video. Um, let's go ahead and let's start on features. Um, the car is very basic. It actually comes with a 6 plus 1 mag, and it only comes with one magazine, unfortunately. Um, other than that, as far as features goes, it's pretty barren. You have a slide lock slash release, you have a mag release, you have combat sights, and a trigger. And that's pretty much it. They like to keep it simple. That way, uh, there's less of a chance of you screwing up, to be honest. There is a really um, great trigger on these guns. Even though these are the cheap versions of the cars, they also have the P-Series, which is considerably more expensive. It has a very awesome trigger. They're very smooth, nice, crisp, clean brake. They also have the K-Series now, which is an alloy frame. And, and they're also considerably more expensive, too. Yeah. I mean, you're looking into the six to $700 range when this guy's running in the $300 range, which we'll go over in a little bit. Um, the Kimber Ultra Carry 2 is a 1911. It's a true 1911. Um, it does have a couple different things that uh, um, maybe some 1911s don't have, especially with the unique guide rod, dual spring guide rod system and bushing air system. I think it's bushingless. Was that correct, Ryan? Yeah. <laughs> okay, and then uh, we it have... Has, it has a small bushing for the, the spring and the guide rod, but there's not a full barrel bushing like you would find on a full size 1911 government model. So we have a 7 plus 1 capacity, which makes it really nice. That's a lot of rounds to be able to carry. Um, it does have the typical 1911 safeties. You have the beaver tail safety and thumb safety. Uh, they are both very nice on the Kimbers. Um, very basic sights, and even though these are basic sights, these are, this is one of the most accurate guns I have ever shot. Actually, I'm going to say this is the most accurate gun I've ever shot. Um, phenomenal accuracy out of it. It's got a phenomenal trigger. You have a match grade bull barrel. You have match grade trigger. You have all these phenomenal parts. The gun's very tight. And Springfield recommends at least a 300 round breaking period out of this gun. You mean Kimber? Or I'm sorry, Kimber. Kimber recommends a 300 round breaking period. <laughs> Car recommends a 200 round breaking period. Now, both of these guns, even though they've been through the breaking periods, we have had zero issues with. So let's go and let's talk about size comparison. Now size on these is going to vary and part of that is because, let's actually just do it from this side, the thumb safety is getting in the way. Um, you actually, the, the Kimber looks smaller but it has a beaver tail that you have to consider. So with the beaver tail, as you guys can see, the car is significantly shorter, at least a half inch. Uh, as far as width goes, they're very comparable. The car looks like it's maybe a little bit thicker. That's because the Kimber tapers down. It rounds. It's, it's kind of round on top, and then it gets thick. Um, as far as grips go, they are both full-size grips, so you can actually fit your entire hand on there. And let's get this right. There we go. And as you guys can see, the car is just a tad bit taller, even though the car has less capacity. Um, other than that, guys, these are both single stack grips, but as you can see, Ryan has hoe grips on his Kimber, which makes the gun considerably thicker. If you just stick with standard 1911 grips, it's still going to be thick, but not quite as thick as this. But it also makes that gun incredibly comfortable to shoot. Yes, and it, and it does improve the, the, the comfort. That is one thing that I did not touch on, but a lot of people complain about the stippling on the cars. And uh, my option to that would be get a set of Talon grips like I have on this car. Um, it's a great option as far as uh, it'll cover up the stippling, it'll make it a little bit more comfortable to shoot and give you a little bit more purchase. Um, other than that, guys, let's go ahead and let's do a uh, weight comparison between these two. Now, we have a polymer gun versus an all-metal um, steel gun, and you have an alloy frame on here. Let's go ahead and let's weigh the Kimber first. Now, with the hoe grips, 7 plus 1 capacity for a total of 8. You are looking at... Oops. You're looking at 30, well, let's make sure we got that right. 31.8 ounces, guys. That is huge. It's That's almost two pounds. That guys. is a lot of weight to be carrying around. And Ryan actually likes this gun, especially for winter carry. 
if he can uh, put it in a shoulder holster or something like that, um, it's not going to be a pocket gun, unfortunately. It just has too much weight to it. It's going to pull your pants down. It's going to pull your shorts down. You're going to be printing like crazy. Check out other options. Yeah, this is a outside the waistband or inside the waistband, small of the back, uh, right side, left side, um, or shoulder holster carry gun. Car CW45. Let's see how this guy does. Now, this has a 6 plus 1 capacity for a total of 7. And I forgot to say we're actually using 230 grain spear gold dots. They are the preferred choice for Ryan. This guy is 27.3 ounces, guys. So you are, what, 3.5 ounces, or actually 4.5 ounces heavier um, than the Kimber is. So 4.5 ounces lighter for this Car CW45. Um, that is a considerable difference when you're considering that uh, the CW45, as far as size goes, um, it's also smaller to carry. You don't have that beaver tail sticking you. It's all going to depend, guys. All right, guys, so anyways, let's go ahead and let's talk about the price differences between these two. Um, price is going to be significantly different, um, especially when you're considering that uh, you can get these cars for 360 or less. We actually have found them all the way down to $330, which is phenomenal in price. Um, we have found the Kimbers. The Kimbers can go all the way up to $900 or more. It all depends on which versions you're looking at. This version in particular runs around $700 to $750. That's usually what I've been seeing it lately. And uh, like I said, this guy ran about $360, $370 bucks when we bought it. But I've seen him for way cheaper. Don't spend over $400 and don't spend over $1,000 for one of these guns. Let's talk about final thoughts on both of these because unfortunately Kimber has started to get kind of a bad rep. Um, this is a Kimber Ultra Carry 2 that runs perfect. We have heard from so many people lately that the Kimber that from that they have the same gun and the gun just sucks, guys. It will not run. It's having some severe issues, reliability issues, failure to ejects, failure to fires, all kinds of stuff. We haven't experienced that, unfortunately. This has been a great gun, but even talking to local uh, dealers, they have said the exact same thing. That unfortunately, even for the money you're spending for the Kimber, it's kind of a hit and miss scenario. Now with the car, the car, like we said, is a two and around braking period. It's been phenomenal. There's not been one issue with the gun. It has had zero issues, zero failures. But car does say within the first 200 rounds, you could see some issues. So um, just make sure that you keep an eye on that. We will be having more videos on the car CW45, including a review coming out soon. Also other comparison videos. If you have any questions regarding either one of these guns, check out our channel. We have comprehensive videos. Uh, and this is Chad from CNR Reviews. Thanks a lot for watching, guys, and have a good night.